What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video from yours truly, the Knights of Horror. Today we're going to talk about my top 10 favorite Knott's Scary Farm mazes. Thought I'd keep in the tradition of doing Knott's. Without further ado, let's get this video started. So I have a list uh, and a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, there's a lot to choose from. The mazes I'm going to be choosing from are from 2008, 2012, 2016, to 2017, and 2018. Um, those are the years I've gone to the event, so let's get it started. With number 10 is going to go to 2008's Lost Vegas. Now, um, I had that was the first year I ever went to any haunt whatsoever. I was in, I think, honestly, like fifth or sixth grade. I didn't make it past two hours and we left that day, but the one maze I did go through before I left was Las Vegas and it was an interesting take on this uh, maze. Basically you were in Vegas but it was overrun by like psychopaths and stuff like that so you saw a lot of dead people and stuff like that and um, psychopaths running around, running Vegas, it was, it was almost like a purge kind of setting and I thought it was really an interesting concept at the time. It was also in 3D so that was pretty cool so yeah. Number nine is going to go to Pinocchio Unstrung. I think that came in at 2012, 2011, but that replaced the dollhouse of the doll factory that was at the red, uh, where the red barn is now. Pinocchio Unstrung was an interesting tale. It was a dark twist on the uh, tale of Pinocchio, where we got to see Pinocchio actually break away from uh, him being controlled and uh, go and start his own kind of like cult in a way because we saw a bunch of puppets who came to life, a bunch of toys who came to life who were all uh, sadistic and, and cruel and twisted and it was an interesting concept on this maze and I thought it was really uh, a fun walk through and it was uh, fun to go through. Especially at the end, they had a giant Pinocchio, like I would have to say at least 20 feet tall, so that was pretty cool. Number eight is gonna go to the original trick or treat. Now the first trick or treat they ever did was with lights on and it was cool. Um, an amazing concept and then at the very end the first year I ever went they had the witch that was the year they were doing the witch they had the witch uh, rise up and do a kind of a ritual at the end and the room went all haywire and people popped out at you it was such an amazing maze and I really liked the original um, and I wish uh, they would bring it back but with this new lights out concept I think that's pretty cool as well number seven is gonna go to Endgame's Warriors of Apocalypse now this maze was really cool because this maze was like honestly like a, a cannibalistic um, end of days kind of maze where uh, it was of course the apocalypse and you see they were summoning these like demons and creatures worshipping them and stuff like that but they were also cannibals trying to survive in this new apocalyptic world. On top of that as you went through the maze they were playing a lot of heavy metal which was really really cool for me um, and it was a really cool maze. That was I think in 2012 when I went. Number six is going to go to Terror of London. That was when they brought in Dr. Jackal and Jack the Ripper. Those were two iconic, uh, Jack the Ripper was of course an iconic London killer back in the 1800s and Dr. Jackal was um, someone I think who was investigating or something. But it was a really cool concept maze and to bring back in the 1800 um, London era was really cool and the fact that it was uh, Jack the Ripper which also made it really cool. Number five is going to go to Dark Ride. Now Dark Ride's been at the event now I think for three or four years. An amazing maze. I, I go through it every time I go, and it's one of my favorites. And I love the concept of this. It's a dark ride that carnies have taken over, and now they've kind of uh, gone sadistic, and they've turned it into their little uh, funhouse of horrors in a way, where you walk through, and as you walk through, all these carnies are killing people, and you might be their next victim. So I really liked it. The settings of each room that you go in are really cool. So something that I really enjoy. Number four is going to go to Special Ops Infected. Now. The first year they ever did Special Ops Infected, I didn't get a chance to go, but I know the first year they ever did it, they, they covered all of Camp Snoopy, and I thought that was an amazing concept that made the game way more fun. If you guys don't know what Special Ops Infected is, it's an interactive zombie killing game where you get a gun and you get to shoot at zombies as you do this mission. Uh, they then have moved it to uh, the Mystery Lodge, and now it's, it's a lot shorter than it was the very first year they did it, but nonetheless, it's still fun to go through and have a good time. Um, especially if you're a fan of the Black Ops Zombies series or just the zombie games in general, um, this is the maze you really want to go through. This is going to bring that experience to life. 
Number three is going to go to Trick or Treat Lights Out. Now, Lights Out was the revamp of Trick or Treat where they gave you a flashlight. In certain areas you went in, uh, the flashlight would turn on and off, and you would have to see what was going to happen. Uh, something would pop out of you, maybe not, maybe so, but nonetheless, I had a very fun time uh, going through this maze, and it was awesome. Number two is going to go to Dark Entities. Now, Dark Entities was new this year at the event. It was a take on Alien meets The Thing. I really enjoyed this maze. The sci-fi in it was awesome. The ships were uh, awesome. There was even scenes where, like, when you thought it was actually going to go, like, haywire, the ground would vibrate and stuff like that. They really go all out with stuff like this, and I really enjoyed that. And, of course, number one is going to go to The Depths because The Depths was honestly the best maze I've ever walked through uh, sci-fi and, and horror put together. All the sea creatures they brought to life mixed with humans and stuff like that. The, um, the shark looked cool. Uh, Davy Jones looked really cool. Um, just everything in that maze was really well put together. The beginning was slow, but as you went through the middle to the end, that's when it started getting really good for me and I really enjoyed it. Especially that effect where they had the green light and then the fog and it made it look like water and the characters would slowly pop out of you because they were like supposed to be underwater and stuff like that. So that was a really cool effect. Uh, some honorable mentions are going to be Forevermore. Then that was the Edgar Allan Poe maze that they did um, back in, I think, 2012. And that was a really fun maze to go through. If you liked, if you're a fan of Edgar Allan Poe, you walk through the maze and you hear a lot of his iconic stories told by uh, Edgar Allan Poe himself. And then as you're listening to them, you also get to see a visual of what's going on. So I thought that was a really cool concept. Uh, Paranormal Inc. Now that's at the event. I think it's been there for like four or five years already. And that one's a fun one. You go into the uh, asylum and you are film they're filming a live t uh, taping of their show Paranormal Inc. And as you go through in the beginning, it starts going uh, ballistic and stuff like that. Then as you walk through the asylum, uh, things are not what they are and stuff like that. So it was a really fun maze and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Shadowlands, of course, is the rogue samurai trying to go around and kill you. This year was really cool. They had a new intro where you walked through the suicide forest and you saw a lot of bodies hanging and stuff like that. You saw a lot of uh, camouflage people hiding in some samurais. And as you walk through the maze, you see a lot of samurais trying to kill you. So I really enjoyed that maze and it, and it was kind of fun. And the last honorable mention is going to go to Red Barn because Red Barn has been there for... Uh, a couple years now and this year I think was probably the best adaptation of the Red Barn and I really enjoyed it and um, yeah I can't wait to see what they do with it next year or if they change it up next year. That is going to do it for my list of my top 10 all time favorite Not Scary Farm mazes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and a, a comment down below of what your guys' favorite mazes are at Not Scary Farm. Make sure to subscribe to join the Madhouse because we are 200 and going strong. I really appreciate you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.